Hope Channel, Changing Lives. Another beautiful Monday. This is Healthy Living on Hope TV. Yes, today is the last Monday of 2020. You would agree with me that the year hasn't been so good. There's been opportunities lost, jobs have been lost, a lot of problems due to this COVID-19. But the fact that you are alive today, the fact that you are breathing and talking. Yes, you need to give thanks to God. You need to join us all and say, Ebenezer, this is how far the Lord has brought us. 2020 has been, hasn't been easy for anyone, but we are here today. All we can say is thank you, Lord, for bringing us close to the end of this year. We know that by his grace, we are going to see 2021 and it's going to be better. We all need to have hope and pray that the coming year will be better. I welcome you to Healthy Living on Hope TV. My name is Bibi. Today we are discussing uh, one important topic. In this festive season, there's a lot of eating and drinking and merrymaking. But have you paused to think about your diet? How you can stay healthy amidst eating and drinking all these sugary foods, eating all these high cholesterol foods? Have you paused to think about how your health will be after all this is over. Yes, that is what we are talking about today. And we have in our midst a doctor. He's a naturopath and a dietitian. And I'm going to introduce him in a bit. He's in the person of Dr. Morris Mensa. Doctor, you are welcome. Hello, Bibi. Thank you. I forgot your other credential. He's also the founder <laughs> of Sankofa, Sankofa Health Movement. Am exactly, I right? That's right. Right. Founder and president. I still left one out. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Baby. How have you been? Yeah, by God's grace. Um, he's been faithful to us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We he's thank been, God. Sure. <laughs> Talk to us about Sankofa Health Movement. W what's this about? Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity and the privilege. Mm. Um, Sankofa Health Movement mm. is a health movement which is trying to do a very great work. Uh, this very dispensation. Uh, this is um, a situation where we've really lost the foundation of our health. Mm. You know, there are certain things which are highly significant, which contributes greatly to our health. Mm -hmm. But today we've, we've neglected all of them. Um, we've ignored lots of other things which factor into the, the, the preliminary factors of our health. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the basic things we want to cast our minds back to reinstate them into the health industry or the mm. health fraternity once again. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to um, food extinction, we're trying to bring up a project that instead of planting ornamental trees and some other trees, mm -hmm. we go into planting edible trees. Okay. I get in it. Yeah. I believe years back we could all uh, um, testify that when certain fruits are in season, uh -huh. we don't buy them. Yeah. Uh, when mango is in season, uh. whilst walking around, you, you find mango trees, uh, lots of mango trees uh. around to, you know, chance on, pluck some and eat and all that. Today, it isn't like that. Yeah. Uh, when guava is in season, today, it's, it's, it's very hard uh. to realize it's guava season. Yeah. Because we are experiencing the seeds, food, mass extinction globally. Uh. Lots of foods are uh, diminishing, they are, they are vanishing mm. out of the system completely. We, we don't know why. We want to bring back all these things, you know, the bread nuts and all those kind of um, things that we have lost completely. Mm. Mm. We want to start a project, the okay. edible tree planting project. Okay. Whereby we involve institutions, individuals and all that. Mm. So if you are setting up your building, we rather advise you and counsel you and encourage you that you go into planting an edible tree instead of any other ornamental tree. Uh -huh. well, edible trees will help us 
means if we are able to do that, schools are able to do that, other institutions, banks and all that, are able to go into this edible tree planting project. It means um, looking at five years ahead of us, mm. we will have lots of varieties of fruits, I mean varieties of fruits and um, some other vegetables okay. that we, we can actually live on. And our, our generation will be uh, grateful for what we have done mm. for them so far. Sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll join you. Oh, yeah, you have Am to. Am I invited? We have, oh yes, mm. lots of technocrats in there. Mm. Uh, we, 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 we do study on every uh, Sunday, on oh, every okay. Sunday. We do okay. study okay. going to naturopathy and dietetics and nutrition mm. and all other forms of our basic health that we need to understand. Wow. Yeah. You are doing a good job. We thank Keep God. it up. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right, now to the topic for discussion today. Right. Um, staying healthy in this festive season, you know that there's a lot of eating and drinking. Parties, gatherings, what have you, and people are going to eat a lot. Back some home, eat yeah. the next day, you know. So l let's first talk about what health is in general. Okay. What is health? Okay, simply, mm. health is the general well-being mm. of a person. Okay. And your general well-being, we mean your physical well-being, your spiritual well-being, your mental, your emotional, mm. psychological, all the cows mm. put together. <laughs> <laughs> so in totality, mm. wholesomely, mm. we want to see you as a very healthy being, okay. generally. Okay. So that is what it means to possess a good health. That's what health actually is. Yes. Yeah. Right. No, since health is in totality, then yeah. I think um, eating healthy also affects the whole being, from physical yes. to whatever it is. It, now, it is the foremost. It's, it's the foremost, yeah. right. So let's talk about what a healthy diet is. Okay. What does it entail? Okay. Um, I want us to look at it from this perspective. Okay. Are you okay? Um, we, we believe in our source. Mm -hmm. We believe we were created. Okay. By a creator, mm -hmm. are you getting it? So when he made this body from head to toe, uh, whatever thing the body consists of, we can talk of the cells, the tissues, the organs, and then the systems at large. Okay. He, the creator who made this very physique, looked at it and then realized, I need a specific fuel. Mm -hmm to sustain this body in its, you know, existence. Cool. And then he provided what will serve as a fuel for us. Mm -hmm. And that is our food. Right. Basically. Mm -hmm. So if we want to really know and understand what a healthy food is, we need to go back. Check out the manual God the Creator gave right from the beginning. Mm -hmm of the creation of man. Mm -hmm. So it was basically fruits mm -hmm. and greens. Okay. So when you talk about healthy diet, today, uh, globally, it has been recognized mm -hmm. that a plant-based, um, I mean, food mm -hmm. is the most um, healthy food that you can talk of in okay. the system today. Okay. So today, we, uh, we, are, we are seeing a significant growth in the vegetarianism, you know, um, prevalence that we've been conducting each and every year globally, okay. uh, people are trooping in. They are now changing their lifestyles. Lots of them are becoming vegetarians, going on plant-based. If they cannot even be vegans, full vegans, they go on being partial, partial. vegetarians and all that. Mm. It, 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 it's all better. It's all better mm. than to go on a lifestyle that will later deteriorate your life completely. Mm. Yeah. But, but meat is sweet though. It is. It is. Not only meat. whole and lot of uh, uh, other bad substances. No. Mm. But what I do tell people is fish. Uh, mm -hmm. When you eat fish, do you know what you're doing? You what? ask yourself, fish, it feeds on your fecal matter mm -hmm. and other bad things or substances we always throw into the sea. Mm -hmm. and when you throw those things into the sea, the fish mm -hmm. will feed on it, and then you go for the fish and you eat it. So 
in the long run, you are ingesting in your own fecal matter. And yeah. this, what, what is so disgusting about it, not only yours, but others as well, because everyone's fecal matter is introduced into the sea. That's dangerous. It is. And surprising. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, after getting your healthy diet, yeah. okay, I know that even if you have a healthy meal, there are certain eating habits that may still affect whatever you are consuming. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I know there are food, certain foods are not to be combined, overeating and all those things. Can you talk to us about it? Right. Yes. Um, talking about the combination of foods, the rightful combination of foods, um, you, will, you first have to understand the categories of foods that we do have. You know, we have fruits, we have vegetables. Mm -hmm. Uh, vegetables, at, at a certain point, mm -hmm. uh, you can say leaves are part of vegetables. Okay. Even tubers are part of vegetables. Oh. Yeah, when you study it to an extent, okay. you have only two classifications. Mm -hmm. You have fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. Whereby leaves, the real vegetables that we, we have known uh, and have been taught in the school system, uh, tubers and all that, at, to some extent, it's all considered as vegetables. Okay. Yes. Uh, cereals and all those. Right. And this, this should be the surprising aspect of the conversation, right? I'm still soaking it in. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, it's, it's important to note mm -hmm. that it's never good to be mixing fruits mm. with veggies. Oh, okay. Yes. So um, we have lots of people who chop um, some like mango, uh -huh. pineapple, uh -huh. banana, apples, and then they add cucumber, uh -huh. carrots, uh -huh. beetroot. It is never right. It's never good to be doing that. Oh. Yeah, generally, people have been practicing this everywhere, but it's, it's not good, you know. You need to introduce only fruits into the system. Because each food that you introduce into the system attracts certain uh, specific um, enzymatic reactions, okay. you know, certain specific fluids that will be secreted to act on the food, you know. So if we consider all these, it's highly important not to confuse your GI system, your gastrointestinal system. Okay. So if you take in only fruit, uh -huh. your system will be able to work effectively on it and to be able to utilize it very well in your system. Okay. And when it comes to the assimilation of nutrients mm -hmm. through your intestines, it will be hastened and it will be a healthy one. Mm. But when you combine the foods, um, the, the mechanism you are creating for the system will be quite challenging. So the system will have to work in a very simple manner and you will have to make it simple for the body or the stomach, the GI system, to do that. So when it comes to the combination of foods, combining fruits mm -hmm. and veggies should be avoided completely. Okay. Yeah. And then some also do combine cooked foods mm -hmm. to fruits, cooked foods mm -hmm. or meals to fruits. Okay. So whilst they are eating probably some like um, jollof, mm -hmm. they have uh, Maybe watermelon mango. cups, okay. you know, uh -huh. uh, besides it. And then whilst they are eating the jollof, they alongside eat the watermelon. Or there's a term they, they used to catch up with like um, uh, sweet after meals. Uh -huh. So as soon as they are done eating, whether they are banku, whatever, uh -huh. they drive right away into eating the, the fruits, fruits. They, they are being served with and all that. It, it isn't the best. Oh. It isn't the best. It doesn't help. Okay. If you're mixing up those things, the system finds it very difficult. It has to be able to work in a serene and then an enabling environment. Uh -huh. So by you mixing up those foods, you hinder or you prohibit the body from working effectively or acting effectively on the food that you have introduced into the GI system. Okay. Yeah. So, Doc, um 
if I have to eat fruits and I have my main meal, say my fufu or whatever it yeah. is, when is the ideal time to eat the fruits? Okay. Um, if you, all things being equal, mm -hmm. if you have a very normal GI system, okay. when you eat fruit, mm -hmm. within two hours time, uh, the should digestion digested. should be, yes, completed. Mm -hmm. Digestion should be completed outright. Okay. Okay. All things being equal, if you have a normal GI system, okay. if you eat fruits, within two hours time, mm -hmm. everything has to be digested out of the stomach, mm -hmm. then transferred into the intestines okay. you know, to start the other work. So two hours after eating fruits, mm -hmm. you can eat your main meal. Oh, yes. after? After. Okay. And that is the, the, the healthier, you know, one I will go for. Okay. As compared to eating um, your main meal before eating the fruits. the fruits. So let's say if my lunch time is at 12 and I want to eat fruits, I have to eat the fruits at about 10. 10. Exactly. And then at 12, I can eat the main exactly. meal. Exactly. Wow. Yes. And then sometimes, if the quantity of your fruit salad mm -hmm. Is that, you know, um, is that plenty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it as a main meal. Oh. Yes. Uh, so if you have something like um, banana, mm -hmm. mango, mm -hmm. and purple, mm -hmm. banana, mango, purple, uh, in a large quantity, mm -hmm. consider it as a main meal. Your throat oh, are you sure? it will get into your stomach. No, you need to eat it in in, yeah. in, in a larger quantity and it, it will fill up your tummy. <laughs> uh, dog, this one. Oh yeah, it's you know, um lifestyle, lifestyle, yeah. whatever you want to uh, get to be part of your lifestyle, adapt it to, 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 to be part of your lifestyle, yeah. it wouldn't be that easy. Yeah. It's not it's not what you've been trained up with. You know what you, you, you've been brought up with. Uh -huh. So certainly you will have to go through some discomforts. It has to be quite challenging and uh -huh. all that. But eventually you realize you can win. Yeah. yeah. It's just about the understanding. Yeah, if you sure. really understand it and you know the essence of going into that, uh -huh. the importance of doing those things, it will actually encourage and inspire you uh -huh. to do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Are there any... Um, kinds of fruits that cannot be combined and um, yes yes okay. um i normally tell people that uh -huh. when you look into the fruit kingdom right there are some we do term them as uh, acidic fruits and alkaline fruits okay um there's a theory out there that we do not have acidic fruits uh -huh. and then we do not have alkaline fruits but that is not true. Okay. If you ascertain the liquid format of every fruit mm -hmm. to check out the pH level, the power of hydrogen level, you realize some are highly acidic mm -hmm. and some are alkaline. When you look at uh, mangoes, for instance, mm -hmm. mango is an, an alkaline fruit. Mm -hmm. You look at purple, mm -hmm. purple is an alkaline fruit. Mm -hmm. You look at banana, banana is highly alkaline. So I always advise my clients, my uh -huh. patients, that when they want to eat fruits, the ones they are supposed to combine uh -huh. are the alkaline ones. Guava is an alkaline fruit. Okay. I don't promote the um, conventional or the foreign fruits for a reason. Um, under every climate, uh -huh. you feed on what your land produces. Produces, right. Very important. Uh -huh. So I don't promote foreign fruits. If you're a Ghanaian, born here, mm -hmm. eat fruits that grow mm -hmm. from the your soil. land. Sure. Are you getting my point? So when you go out there, mm -hmm. you can eat this. Mm -hmm. But whilst you are, you are here, mm -hmm. you really have to eat the, the, the fruits your land is producing. Mm. So some of the alkaline fruits are the banana, mm -hmm. mangoes, mm -hmm. purple, guava, uh, watermelon. Okay. Yes. Um, there has been a teaching out there too that um, you're not supposed to eat uh, watermelon combined with, with other, other fruits. fruits. Sure. But people do not understand. Mm, that's yeah, it's, true. That is not always the case. Okay. There are certain conditions when you are treating 
you can give such a caution. Oh, okay. Yes, the glycemic index of um, watermelon mm -hmm. is very high. Oh. It's very high. So those who are diabetic, uh -huh. uh, most especially the insulin-based diabetics, uh -huh. we do advise them that they, they separate watermelon from the other alkaline fruits. Okay. I get him because of the sugar level. Exactly. All right. So that the glycemic index wouldn't shoot up to, you know, uh -huh. get, get him or her hyper. Hyper. All I right. get in the uh -huh. point. So it's important to note the difference. Uh -huh. Yet, every normal human being, uh -huh. watermelon can be combined with whatever alkaline fruit that you want to eat. Okay. And then some of the acidic fruits that we have known, our minds have been exposed to, are the tangerines, the oranges, Orange. the grapefruits, mm -hmm. the pineapples, you know, mm -hmm. less of them to talk of. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones you can also combine. Even when it comes to a fruit juice preparation, mm -hmm. a smoothie preparation, you don't, you don't combine these ones. Okay. You separate the alkaline ones from the acidic ones. Mm. And mm. it will do a great work and a great job on your system. Mm. Yes. Talk, um, I don't know how this can be done, but let me ask you, since you're a professional, how will I know, like from the layman's perspective, which fruit is alkaline and which is acidic? Okay. Um, is there any tec special technique? Um, um, it's just by <laughs> discretion. <laughs> Um, it's, it's by education that we can let you know. Okay. That is why I took my time to mention Separate, them. Right, yes. Right. To mention them, mm. mention the names out. Mm, mm. Uh, so I, I didn't just say alkaline fruits and um, right. acidic fruits and mm -hmm. then just mm -hmm. box down. I mm -hmm. tried to mention them one after the other. So far, the ones we have in the system. So if any comes to mind, you can ask me and I tell you, I will tell you this is acidic. Or this is alkaline. alkaline. Yes. Mm, mm. But the most acidic ones are the ones we, we term as the citrus fruits. Fruits, sure. Yes, those mm. are mostly the acidic ones. Mm. But you talk of the pomegranates, the grapes, the apples, you know, all those are alkaline, alkaline ones. You mm. know, the sauce up. Right. It's all alkaline. Alkaline. Yes. So you okay. can take sauce up with popo, with banana, with mango, mm. uh, with guava, with mm. watermelon. It's all alkaline. Alkaline. Yeah. Mm, mm. Mm. It's getting interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is Healthy Living on Hope TV. Let's go for this quick break. When we come back, the discussion continues. Stay tuned. Osofwo Jonathan Amo Ameyao, President, Mid North Ghana Conference of SDA. A ton safro se beka afi 2020 united in praise jumedia a bekosu of valley view university techiman campus e home jumedia e baso eye december busumi mora ne de toso e dia sabako wabra abo no num apa hu e dia sa na beka ye hu ni yenji nyankopon aye e wo ne ne pa oyema ye nyinara anyum tofo a e ba jumedia asibini harbingers the halal kwa Golden Voices, The Patriots, Soul Winners, Central Church Choir, Glory Choir, Amazing Great Singers, Eni Bebrea Ekaho, Guest Speaker, Pastor Dr. Koenim Buache, President, Northern Ghana Union Mission. Kayo Jumediase, Atadia Yeshe Eye Fufu, Wabra Yenam COVID 19, Sheshayeso, Eye Yamia Ye. Near Kamfuna Shani Din Konkone no Yam, I want a bamba or the Adum Yang, a fee Muninara, Kayo, Jumedia Air Basso, a year thirty first December, twenty twenty, Wabra, above five thirty PM, Jumedia Super Coso, our Hope Channel Ghana, Wabra, Ye Chefi, Valley View University Campusa, a war Techiman, Kai, a year COVID nineteen, she say Yinara, so Yadibe Yaduma. Hello, thank you for joining us. This is Healthy Living on Hope TV and welcome back from the break. If you just joined us, we are discussing how to stay healthy 
during this festive season. And we have a doctor with us who is helping us to understand the topic better. You can join us with your comments or questions via our WhatsApp line on 0559680066. You can also join us on Facebook and YouTube. We are streaming live via our handle Hope TV GH. You can send in your qu questions and comments as well. So, Doctor, before we left off, we were yeah. speaking about um, general eating habits, and we've spoken about combination of foods. Yeah. Let's talk about gluttony. Right. Uh, what is that? It's a very big word. My gluttony? I can't even It simply pronounce means overeating. It. Okay. Yeah, so gluttony means overeating. Overeating, over okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, it's something people have been doing of late and they have known the replication of that uh -huh. and they are trying to you know change from uh, possessing such a habit but if you do not take care uh -huh. you might compromise if you do not take care you might compromise uh, most of the times there are certain petty petty factors that actually contribute to you overeating oh, okay yes um let me touch let me touch on right Sometimes there are certain foods which are too spicy. Uh -huh. Are you getting me? Uh, we, we already know that artificial spices are never good for this human body. Right. Artificial spices, never ever good in any way. Uh -huh. Precisely 0% of right. um, importance or benefits or whatever. To the body. To the body. Right. So we don't really need it. Uh -huh. it's, it's nothing. It costs 90 Mm. That is equal to zero, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember your math. <laughs> so we don't really need um, artificial spices in our diet when cooking. It's a factor. And then secondly, uh, we don't masticate thoroughly. We rush when chewing. Mm. We rush when chewing food. We don't masticate slowly. We masticate so fast that we, by the time we realize we are full, it's more than what the body needs. Mm -hmm. By the time we realize, oh, I'm okay, you realize you, you, you had actually over it. I get in the point. Uh -huh. So when you, you take your time and you masticate slowly, mm. uh, a bite at a time, it will really help. Mm. It always reminds me of a friend. Hmm. whom I had some, some, some time ago, okay. <laughs> during those times in school, uh, we used to eat together whenever it's break time. You know, so there was a time I realized, no, this friend, you know, when you check out his hand, hmm. and he doesn't even chew the rice, uh -huh. he, he would just swallow the rice, just like that. So I said, no, I need to develop a strategy. <clears throat> Mostly, I've also been contributing much than he does. Yeah. So we go and then he takes like three bites <laughs> and the bowl is empty. <laughs> I also chew very slowly. Slowly, yeah. So one day I was very hungry. And he came and, Maurice, let's go and take something. I said, today I'm fasting. Uh -huh. I lied because I was, I was unable he to feed. just finish the food and leave you. Yes. <laughs> so I just lied. Oh, today I'm fasting. Oh. So as soon as he left, mm -hmm. I quickly went to another place, not a regular place that we do eat from, and then bought some food, started eating very fast so he wouldn't see me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what happened, whether God was trying to punish me or what. <laughs> I just saw my friend coming, and I could barely do anything, anything yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. And I said, ah, but I thought you said you were fasting. I said, I couldn't too. My mm. tummy was worrying me. So I had to come and get mm. something. One kind, so some <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's serious. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's how they are brought up. Okay. Uh, most of our parents, when they are what are eating very fast, you know, uh, eating disorganized, mm -hmm. not in an orderly manner and all that, they don't try to tame them and train them how to eat properly. They do not do that. They uh -huh. overlook upon these things. And these children will grow up eating like that. Uh -huh. So there are some people today, as I speak with you, as old as they, they are, they, they, they eat haphazardly. Yeah. You know, 
chew their mouths somehow, be eating, you know, they don't really take their time, they don't have time for what they are actually doing. Uh -huh. So all this contributes to overeating. Before you realize, or uh, before you think, oh, now I'm full, you had overeat. Okay. So it's important to look at these things so you wouldn't overeat. Uh. Now considering that there are people to who also, also consciously overeat because probably the food is so appetizing, yeah. very tasty and delicious. So well, they, they don't want to discard what is left. So they would rather... And I tell them, uh. you want to uh, eat something uh, that you, you could have actually, you know, um, put off, save, or probably into the trash, uh -huh. which could cost probably like a CD or two, uh -huh. say two CDs. Right. And then you said, no, I wouldn't want to discard this. I want to eat it. But you don't know what it's, go it's going to cost you actually. So uh -huh. that might lead you into a disease whereby you might be spending millions of cities uh -huh. later in your lifetime. Uh -huh. So I always tell people that don't let or do not let a moment of pleasure, just a minute or two of pleasure, uh -huh. you know, lead you into something that will cost you uh, your lifetime. Yeah. People have been diabetic now. Uh, they are struggling with it. People have been hypertensive simply because there were, there, there were certain things they neglected. They did not pay much attention to. They could have done that. Uh -huh. It could have caused them uh, nothing, virtually nothing, yet they didn't. Uh -huh. They compromised, you know, went ahead, ate anyhow, and today they are suffering the vigorous effect of such things. Uh -huh. So we really need to be temperate. So when it comes to being able to control how you wouldn't overeat, uh -huh. the key is temperance, being temperate, ab abstemiousness, uh -huh. trying to control yourself. You need to build such capacity within you. If you don't make the effort, it wouldn't come by chance. Right. It's a choice you need to go in for. Uh -huh. You need to be decisive when it comes to certain things. You need to take a firm decision, you know, to deny yourself of such thing. You know, the passion and the appetite that will arouse you. So you need not to indulge or engage in such things by way of being temperate, being able to control your appetite very well. Mm. And I, yes, I know um, the food is very delicious. Yes, I think I'm full. It will be unhealthy for me to overeat. Mm -hmm. Just tell yourself that. Because overeating can lead you to diabetes. Yeah. You can develop diabetes by overeating. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of people have been dreaming very bad. Even uh, lots of them are having their spiritual lives um, somehow retarded. They are not spiritually strong and all that. They are having um, spiritual weakness, you know, somehow, simply because they are overeating. But when you do not overeat, you are able to go to sleep, you know, in a sound state and in a sound manner your body will be in rightful shape or con co condition of um, spirituality mm -hmm. when you are going to sleep. But sometimes when you overeat, mm -hmm. uh, there's something we call putrefaction. Okay. Putrefaction means the food is somehow spoiling um, in, the, in the stomach. Oh, okay. It's putrefacting. Um, I want probably another word or term which, which can be more yeah. uh, So it's not, it's, it's not digesting? Not or? digesting. Okay. When it's putrefact, it means, uh, say... It's decaying. It's decaying, exactly. Okay. I get in the yeah. point. That is putrefaction. So, if it's decaying in the system while you are asleep, okay. all those who get into your bloodstream, <coughs> getting that kind of fluid, which isn't that good for your system, running through your bloodstream, getting into your brain, it affects your brain functioning as well. So, most especially when you are asleep, you start, you start dreaming very bad. You start having bad dreams. And you might think, um, uh, we feel for Nayo. Mm. Meanwhile, it isn't. Mm. It's, it's the food that it you have. You now, you are doing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you really need to check out your, your diet this very mm. festive season. Mm. That you do not overeat. Mm. Most especially, there are people, our friends, who will actually drive you into doing that uh -huh. if you do not take care. Yeah. Oh, Kwame, let's eat, let's eat. Oh, eat, oh. Uh, we live, we only live... Once. 
<laughs> Problem not the finish. Know. Enjoy. Enjoy. They will tell you a whole lot of other stuff. Forgetting if uh, you don't die by accident, mm -hmm. you can get sick. Mm. And if you don't take care, that alone can kill you before you even die. Mm. So we really need to be thinking about these things. Don't let people lure you sim sim simply into eating certain stuff that you yourself know that those things are, are, are actually not good for you. Yeah. So gluttony, overeating should be avoided in, in our lives completely. Not only this festive season, yet uh -huh. we, we, we want to create the awareness so that people wouldn't be uh, attracted into doing that by their friends, yeah. uh, family members and stuff. Uh -huh. Sometimes you have eaten from your house. Yeah. You, you go for a visit, yet you are, you are still compelled to uh -huh. eat, you know, um, your, your, your cousin's food, yeah. your friend's food, uh, wh whosoever you want to visit, simply because we, really, we, think, we think it's part of our custom and all that. No, we shouldn't be doing that. If you do that, you're hurting your body. You eat to full. Sometimes you even eat and you realize you are too full. Uh -huh. You have over and you're unable to even it's control it yourself. Breathe. You know, sometimes you find it even difficult yeah. to breathe. Uh -huh. So it's, it's not a good thing at all. It kills. Hmm. When over you, whenever you overeat, uh -huh. you trying to um, bring down your, your, your age. Your, uh -huh. your longevity is, is being targeted. Oh. When, whenever you are overeating, um, premature that should be, you know, in your mind when you are overeating. Uh. If you want to get to the age God is actually blessing you uh, with, overeating can decline that. So uh. make sure you don't compromise that. Make sure you don't compromise yeah. that. Now, Doc, when we spoke about combination of foods, um, yeah. I wanted to ask something. You know, there's this habit of... Um, eating okay maybe you have your plate of rice and then you have maybe a glass of say some juice or whatever by it then you take one spoon then you sip small then what's your take on that yeah how you were asking the question mm -hmm. and how you were doing your mouth <laughs> i realized you used to do that no <laughs> i'm asking for something really <laughs> okay that is um, I mean, drinking while eating, yeah. or eating and drinking at the same mm -hmm. time, um, it should be avoided. Mm. Whenever you are eating, mm -hmm. your system will secrete enzymes to react on the food you are eating. Okay. It is secrete the HCl, the internal hydrochloric acid, mm -hmm. to also act on the food you have eaten. And all these enzymes mm -hmm. and the HCl possess a certain kind of pH. Mm -hmm. That is the expected pH God has designed for uh, those fluids to be secreted to act on the specific food you have eaten. Right. And such food attract certain specific enzymes to act on that food. Mm -hmm. But when you drink, you dilute those fluids mm -hmm. which will act on the food you have eaten. So uh, if it's water, soda drink, fruits drink, whatever, fruit juice, whatever, it shouldn't be taken with food. Okay. It should be taken separately at a different time. That would be, that would be quite a good option to, to actually look onto. But eating and drinking at the same time doesn't actually help. It confuses the GI system. Mm. It doesn't provide the enabling environment for it to work effectively. Are you getting it? Okay. So for you to have a proper regulation of enzymes mm -hmm. and internal HCL, it means you have to avoid drinking whilst eating. People ask of soup. Mm -hmm. Soup, the body does not recognize soup as a juice. Okay. It recognizes it as food. Right. So people should note the difference. Uh, due to the, the properties, the uh, nutritional properties in soup, the, the body sees it and acknowledges it as, as food. food. Not fluid. Not fluid. Okay. 
So we need to know mm. all these different. So you can take so your can soup alongside whatever yes. meal you are taking. Yes, it can be jollof with soup. Cool. It's okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right, thank you for that <laughs> clarification. Now let's go to, we've spoken about um, a lot of things. Now, yeah. what are we supposed to eat? I want us to group it for children. We have the adolescents, we have the elderly or the aged. You know, children, are this, during this festive season, there's a lot of parties, drinking, a lot of sugary stuff and all that. What advice do you have for us? Okay. What should we eat? Okay, thank you very much. Since um, already uh, people are into um, juices, uh -huh. they really like juices when it comes to this festive season. You, you meet a lot of them. Throughout, throughout a whole day, they wouldn't eat anything heavy. But I see them eating, you know, um, some snacks and yeah. juicy snacks, juicy snacks, juicy throughout. You can prepare fruit juices, a healthy fruit juice for your ward or your kid okay. or even for yourself. So you have watermelon juice. If you don't have a juicer, just blend the watermelon without water because it highly contains water. Just blend the watermelon and then you strain. You have the watermelon juice. You don't go and buy a processed one, a manufactured one from machines. You know, do, do those ones from your house. Do them yourself so that um, the, it's safety and hygiene, hygiene. you know, everything. Uh, it's natural state will all be considered into, into the picture. Yeah. You can prepare orange juice. By squeezing the orange, straining it, and then you, you have, have the orange juice. juice. Mm. You can prepare pineapple juice. So you chop your pineapples, you add a little ginger, you blend everything, and you strain. You can even uh, squeeze a little lemon, lemon yeah. into the pineapple ginger juice. Mm -hmm. And it tastes so great. You can have smoothies. So the juices and smoothies can, can, can take the place of uh, the soda drinks or the soft drinks mm. that we buy for our children, our kids, or for our ceremonies and all that. Mm. And then cereals are also very good for kids. Okay. Cereals are very, very, it's an excellent food that you can go in for when mm. it comes to kids, their eating habits and all that. But sometimes you want to prepare some porridge or whatever for them. Um, we already know we have um, wheat porridge in the system. We have the rice porridge. We have the normal condo porridge in the system. We have millets. Um, so there are certain um, specific um, combinations that you can also have yeah. for them. You can look at tiger nut. Mm -hmm. Tiger nut, a dried one. Obtain a dried tiger nut. Get uh, brown rice, a mm -hmm. brown rice. Mm -hmm. um, get um, a little millet, okay. you know millet. Mm -hmm. And then sesame seed. Okay. You know, sesame seed, yeah. and then probably a little maize. Dry all these, and then you can roast them for a while. Go have it melt, and then you have your something like Tom Brown. Oh, okay. I get in it yeah. for a healthy porridge. You can use mm. that in preparing a healthy porridge for them, mm. and it will also be very sumptuous. Mm. And then we, the Italy people, we normally like the cooked foods. Yeah. We need to make sure we don't. We don't eat too many varieties at a time. Okay. You know, there are some people, they will buy, I, I mean, they, they can prepare it themselves, wachi. Mm -hmm. The wachi already consists of beans and rice. rice. And then they have spaghetti on. Mm -hmm. They have um, gari. gari on. They have the salad, which will comprise of lots of vegetables, you know, yeah. carrot, beetroot, onion, cucumber, leaves. They will have wele on. The wele mm -hmm. is leather. That is, that's what's used in making our shoes and belts. Yet people like chewing it a lot. Mm -hmm. The wele is in there. They're going for meat. Um, I mean, the cow meat, yeah. the fish, the egg. Mm -hmm. You know, it's too much. Avocado, a lot. One person and then in, in a single plate, he or she wants to get all the kinds of foods we have in the world. It's it doesn't work like Mary. that. Making merry. Mm -hmm. Uh, you soon, <laughs> you soon cry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's mm. important to limit the varieties of foods you introduce into your plate. Mm -hmm. At most, four varieties at a time. At most, 
four varieties at a time will be helpful. Uh -huh. and then we need to be taking more soup, more soup than taking in the, the stew. Okay. Yeah, so we need any to be. soup at all? Um, we should cut down on groundnut or peanut soup. Oh, okay. At this very time, due to the uric acid that it gives, you know, oh, okay. there's so much uric acid in the peanut or the groundnut that we eat. Mm -hmm. So uh, be eating it ceremonially, you know, or, or sparingly. I get in it. Okay. It shouldn't be that regular. So you can go in for rare, rare, rare soup. Rare soup is very good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Rare soup is very good. Mm -hmm. We have the green soup, the abunabunu, abunabunu, abunabunu okay. the green soup. Very, very good. You know, we have. Um, other leaves that you can use for making soup. We have okra soup. Okra mm -hmm. soup is also very good. The iron and other sources of mm -hmm. nutrients that you get from the okra is very good. You know, there's a soup? notion out there mm -hmm. that when you eat okra, you have a uh, you you have waste problem and yeah. lots of yeah. other things. No, that is not true. Mm -hmm. That is never true. Okay. <laughs> okra is very good. Mm -hmm. One of the great vegetables that you wouldn't want to miss, you know, oh. it's nutrients, yes. Okay. Light soup is also there and very good. But we need to be chopping some vegetables into it, you know. There's squash, mm -hmm. there's garden eggs and all that that you can be chopping into your soup to make it, you know. When you prepare palm fruit soup, that is um, a ben the mm -hmm. palm fruit soup, you can chop some uh, vegetables and leaves contemere, boma, you mm -hmm. know, those leaves into it or else you can also want to or wish to prepare some um, ayoyo, only ayoyo or probably ayoyo and okra mm -hmm. together, just that, and then add it to probably the palm fruit soup mm. to have that combination for your banku, you know, uh, any other food that you can actually eat it with. Mm. So all these are there for us. And then we need to cut down on lots of things. Mm. We need to cut down on lots of things. It's, it's a lifestyle. And so many diseases today that we, we, we see mm -hmm. are lifestyle diseases. Mm. The diabetes, the high Habitation. blood pressure, the stroke, and all, all those are lifestyle diseases. It means uh, we are actually eating our way into getting those diseases. And as we eat into getting those diseases, we can also eat away, you know, the mm. those diseases or eat from such diseases. Mm. So you eat into it and you can eat away it. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, we have one question from uh, one of our... They want to know if um, eating fruits on an empty stomach, like early in the morning, is it, is it good? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Yeah, people say that when you eat... Uh, citrus fruits uh, on, on, an, yes, mm. on an empty stomach, you develop ulcer, but it is not true. Mm. If you study the physiological um, concept of ulcer, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't come in there, mm. not at all. Mm. It's, you know. Fruits, its acidity can't cause you ulcer. Mm -hmm. The acidity of fruits can never cause you ulcer. ulcer. So we shouldn't be misinforming the populace or the public out there. Mm. Because they are less informed, we're trying to, you know, come across with anything that we hear. Yeah. That's Ghana for you. Mm -hmm. That's Ghana for you. Yeah. Today they hear this, everyone will be on the mm. way. It will go viral. Yes, trooping same life. The next year, it will be something mm. different. So eating fruits on an empty stomach is the best thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. It's the best thing ever that you can do. But after that, you take in a lot of water. So oh, okay. the body can work on the food you have eaten very well. Mm. Yes. Uh, we have another question. It's a breastfeeding right. mother. Mm -hmm. She wants to know how many times uh, it's advisable to eat when you are breastfeeding. Um, it depends on um, the breastfeeding cycle, okay. how old the baby is, mm -hmm. and the eating uh, lifestyle of the baby. Okay. You know, certain babies, they are like three months. But they eat like nine months old babies, mm. you know. So if your baby eats a lot and you think it's demanding, your body will be prompting you. Mm -hmm. You need not to have a specific or uh, restrained, you know, yes. Mm -hmm. Your body will be prompting you. So when you realize your, your baby is trying to get lots out of your body, your body will also be prompting you to eat a lot and mm -hmm. you respond to that. So sometimes you listen to your body. So it wouldn't be like you have been 
um, programmed to go yeah. in a certain way. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. So just you study the environment. If you don't feel hungry, don't eat. Mm. If you don't feel hungry, you shouldn't eat. There's no need eating if you are not hungry. You eat when your body needs it, mm -hmm. when it calls for it. Mm -hmm. So eating, you know, being hungry is also part of nature's call. Yeah. If you don't feel like you want to urinate, you wouldn't go mm -hmm. to do that. I get in my point. Yeah. So if you don't feel like eating, don't eat. If you're not hungry, I shouldn't say if you don't feel like eating because certain people, some, they, are hung, they, they, they are full, you know, they have their stomach very full, yet they, they still, still feel, feel like for certain things, you know. They crave for food, mm -hmm. you know, anyhow. But it shouldn't be like that. Mm. If you feel like you want to eat, um, you are starved, you are hungry, kindly find something and eat. And if you are breastfeeding, it is normal to go beyond eating two times or three times. Okay. It is normal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you are even compelled to be eating in the night. Mm. But you just make sure... Uh, it's moderation. You be, yes. Eating in moderation and then you also be peculiar about the choices of foods mm -hmm. you'd rather be taking in the night. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, our, our time is fast spent, but right. I want us to touch quickly on the effects of um, living or taking in unhealthy stuff. Yeah. What, what effects does it have on our body? Okay. One, physically, mm -hmm. you will develop lots of disorders or maladies, okay. diseases. Mm -hmm. All the lifestyle diseases that we have mentioned, if you don't eat healthy food, you eat and have your uh, blood vessels blocked, mm -hmm. having plaques being formed, which will cause you um, hypertension. Uh, you will have uh, your insulin not being properly regulated mm -hmm. in your system. You have diabetes. Mm -hmm. You can have cerebrovascular accident. That is stroke. stroke. Yeah. You can experience that because you are actually not uh, eating well. You introduce lots of fat into the system. Mm -hmm. So of all the lifestyle diseases that we have known, mm -hmm. heart attack, heart palpitation, all those things, you are... Uh, likely to experience them if you are not eating well. Mm -hmm. I get in my point. And then spiritually, your spiritual advancement will also be somehow retarded. If you really want to be spiritually advanced, you, you first need to be physically fit. Sure. If you are physically fit, that will aid you to exercise in whichever aspects or environments that will help you be advanced spiritually. Mm -hmm. I get in the point. Yeah. And then emotionally, it will also help you. Um, whatever gets into the system has a corresponding effect on all the aspects of our living. Uh -huh. Our emotional life, uh -huh. spiritual life, physical life, psychological life, whatever. If you eat, it affects it. So every bite that you take uh -huh. counts greatly to your life. Sure. So let us just make sure that we are taking the right choices. Health never comes by chance mm. by choice yeah let us choose and choose properly let us choose and choose properly thank you so much doctor for coming it's been an interesting sure, one i know <laughs> when we call on you you'll come some certainly, other time certainly. right and to you have you i thank you so much for spending time with us remember that it is never too early or too late to start eating or living healthy thank you for being with us throughout the year there was no healthy living without you, our viewer. May the Lord richly bless you. And as we have just three days to the end of the year, do take care of yourself and remember that COVID-19 is still with us. Please protect yourself. Wear your nose mask if you are in the midst of people. Maintain your social distancing. Wash your hands regularly under running water with soap and also use your alcohol-based hand sanitizers if there is no soap and water available. My name is Bibi. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night and take care. Bye-bye.